Hello everyone. Now these three categories, you see a lots of method uh, methods proposed in last two three years. So let's start with uh, knowledge editor, global optimization. Okay. So I think this is one of the first papers in knowledge editing uh, way back 2021. The high level idea is you have this pre-trained large language model, right? And you have another network which we call hyper network or knowledge editor. This is another neural network method, right? And what is the purpose of this knowledge editor or hyper network? The purpose is to learn this delta W, right? This is global optimization. What it does? So the original original parameter space is W, and what you, what you are learning? You are learning delta W, right? And this, this delta W will just, just be added to W. Okay, so the hyper network or the knowledge editor is responsible for learning delta W. Okay, all right. So this is my actual network F, actual large language model. This is LLM, right? You are given the input X, right? The, so the, the input is the space needle is located located in the city of dash. The model outputs Seattle as the you know as the predicted um, as the prediction right and theta is the pre-trained parameters right again remember the notation when i say theta i basically indicate all the parameters combined together and when i say w w is basically a parameter of a single layer okay and this is my knowledge editor this is my hyper network okay and what is the goal of this hyper network the goal is to learn this delta theta the updated weight, right? When it is learned, you just add delta theta to theta, and theta dash is going to be the updated parameters. And how does it operate? It basically op it, 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 it is operated using uh, uh, some feed forward networks. This alpha, beta, uh, gamma, delta we'll discuss. Okay, so when we when we learned this delta theta, right? theta dash is my new updated parameter i will make sure that those inputs for which i wanted to update the model which is x basically here for those inputs the new uh, the the edited knowledge will be returned right remember this is dx so dx is what dx is all dx is a set of all knowledge which i want to incorporate for all dx the updated version should be returned for all ox for the other set, right, non-targeted set, the original, the old version should be returned. Okay, so now let's discuss this hyper network, which is, as I mentioned, it's a bit complicated. Let's focus on this. So the hyper network is a normal neural network. Okay, I will tell you what what are the components of this hyper network but think of it as a black box neural network right whose parameters are phi okay you need to learn this uh, hyper network you need to train this hyper network right when we train this hyper network what is the objective function the objective function is this this loss so so you have now this is your original llm if pretend llm right this is the hyper network um, uh, we call it g right parameters are phi parameters are theta here okay so now what is px look at this objective function carefully px is the paraphrased version of all the edits that you want to incorporate px can also be dx when there is no paraphrase right so for all the original and the paraphrased version of uh, the input x cap right i want the model to return the updated output a right so i want this llm to return the updated uh, output a right if it is unable to return then we'll have some loss we'll have some loss here okay so this loss will be back propagated so i would like to minimize the loss of the original llm right such that now think about it when we 
when we uh, and 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 what is the target here the target here, here is to essentially train this z right to learn this parameters uh, phi right so what is the sub what is the constraint the constraint here is as follows the constraint here is this loss is computed with respect to px there is another set ox i do not want the model to basically uh, you know respond to any of the queries which belong which which belongs to ox right so so this is the this is the constraint it says that that the the updates right with respect to ox should be as low as possible as minimum as possible right so for those queries which belong to ox i do not want to respond i i do not want the model to respond to any of these queries right they they, they should be untouched and how do you make uh, how do you make sure this happens right now if we make a very hard constraint that i do not want the model to respond to any of these ox any of the instances of ox that would be very hard constraint right so therefore they introduce some sort of slack m so what they said is that i will allow the model to to make some errors so, i mean when if the model makes some i mean if the model edits ox those will be errors i will allow the i will allow the model to make errors up to m right so m is a hyperparameter let's look at the c the c is the cost function right so they 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 took two types of cost functions the first cost function is just a tail divergence right it basically says that <clears throat> that i have two llms one is the one is theta other is theta theta dash theta dash is the updated one theta is the old one the tail divergence between the old and the new one should not should 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 be less than m less than equals to m okay this is clear so this is one loss that they considered they also tested their model with another loss this is just an lp lp norm right they looked at the parameter difference between uh, between the original one and the updated one right and uh, that's going to be the loss this is kind of lp norm and this is kl divergence so that they, they tested and and they showed that kl divergence works better compared to lp norm clear so so far we assumed that there is this hyper network hyper network will be trained based on this objective but we do not know what are the components of the hyper network is it just a feed forward network or what, what it is and now we'll discuss this so the hyper network or the knowledge editor consists of multiple components okay now this is a hand drawn uh, i'm very lazy in drawing this figure so i drew this uh, by hand it's a hand drawn uh, figure of this hyper network again i want you to focus on this hyper network so this is my hyper network phi okay what is f theta f theta is the original llm whose parameters are theta okay and the purpose of this hyper theta uh, hyper network is to learn delta theta okay now the hyper network is essentially a combination of lstms and feed forward networks so the input to the hyper network is x y a <coughs> what is x what is y what is a a, um, a is the object that uh, that you want to update x is the um, input prompt so we first get the embedding of this uh, this one we pass it to uh, through a by lstm this is a, by, a simple by lstm uh, followed by a feed forward network so after this feed forward network we get an embedding of this triplet x y a this h right now h this h is a single vector right h is now fed to four different feed forward networks alpha beta right gamma delta forget about this eta for the time being alpha beta gamma delta 
these are four feed forward networks and i will tell you the purpose of this feed forward networks later first understand the architecture and then i'll discuss the purpose of this feed forward network okay so this h will be fed will be fed to four feed forward networks alpha beta gamma and delta the feed forward network will produce a vector right corresponding to h so the vector that will be produced by this alpha feed forward network will be passed through a softmax this is a softmax will be passed through a softmax right similarly uh, beta's beta's uh, vector will be passed through a softmax right alpha's so alpha's output will be passed through a softmax beta's output will be passed through a softmax right and this will be multiplied with with gamma and delta so alpha alpha's output will be multiplied with gamma and this is outer product okay similarly beta's uh, beta's output uh, short max output will be multiplied with delta <coughs> okay look at here right <coughs> now when we multiply a vector uh, the, 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 this kind of outer product two vectors outer product it will produce a matrix it will produce a matrix so so here this is a matrix this is also a matrix okay so these are four feed forward networks there is another feed forward network which will produce which which basically the input of the feed forward network is again h and the output is eta what is eta eta is a scalar since this is a scalar what i do i will pass eta through a sigmoid which will make sure that this is between the range right so all the outputs of the feed forward networks will be passed through uh, softmax which will make sure this is for the uh, it output follows the distribution right 0 to 1 similarly the, the the scalar will be fed to a sigmoid okay now focus on this component this is the main part of this model delta w that you are learning okay so for this input the original model this is the original model the original model already produced the loss right the loss and this loss i mean if you know the loss you also know the gradient right so this is the gradient okay so gradient is what it's a, it, it is again a matrix right it is again a matrix now you do not want that i mean you basically want to control this update you do not want that the 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 whatever gradient that that is produced will be directly added to the old old, old parameter you want to control this gradient flow you want to change certain components of the gradient or certain components of this gradient matrix this is very similar to lstm and gru this gated mechanism right now look at here this alpha what is this alpha cap the alpha cap is the is the matrix is the outer product matrix that you obtained earlier so this will be dot product will uh, i mean element wise dot product with the with the gradient matrix okay and then what is beta hat beta hat is, is again another output uh, feed forward data output that you obtained earlier so if you look at only this part what does it mean what does it mean it means that remember the alpha this alpha hat is produced by this hyper network right so alpha hat is parameterized by phi so you want to learn such phi's right which will basically allow you to update things selectively right and what is the purpose of this eta this is just a scaling factor okay so again in summary what we learned here this hyper network the loss the loss is this loss right the loss is the loss uh, with respect to the original network right now here look at it carefully the i am not touching the original parameters at all i am just learning w uh, i am just learning delta delta theta or delta w right and that will just be added to the parameters 
okay so this is a global optimization uh, technique right all right so this is the result so that the, the, they tested their uh, method this knowledge editor uh, with full fine tuning full fine, fine tuning first layer full fine tuning all the layers right and this is another method that was proposed earlier first layer uh, 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 fine tuning all layer fine tuning and uh, and this result corresponds to the knowledge editor with l2 norm loss i mentioned there are two loss functions that they uh, checked with one is this scale divergence and this is l2 right so this is l2 okay and this is their output uh, simple knowledge editor i'll tell you what is this loop and px later but first look at the experimental uh, uh, you know evaluation measures so success rate now these measures are uh, are also used in other papers success rate says that whatever is there in my dx in the dx right i want the model to produce proper outputs for dx right so success rate will be measured with respect to dx what is uh, uh, return accuracy return accuracy is uh, localization it basically says that i look at ox other outputs and the model should not produce uh, should not change anything with respect to ox right and what is equivalence accuracy equivalence accuracy is measured with respect to px so dx ox and px okay now look at it very carefully the result is very interesting it says that for all the fine tuning full fine tuning first layer fine tuning full fine tuning the success rate is 100% meaning all the instances which are there in dx they have been updated properly right with l2 norm success rate is 99% with their method success rate is 98% 2% error right which apparently looks bad but let's look at the other parameters other metrics return rate return accuracy the full with full fine tuning the rate the accuracy is 86% what is return accuracy return accuracy is measured with respect to ox so when you do full fine tuning with the set of new knowledge you are you start forgetting the pretend knowledge okay so but but if you look at knowledge editor their return accuracy is 97% 98% okay now what is this loop so the so the, the so knowledge editor plus loop is one setting where you keep on updating the models right you keep on updating the models with respect to dx until unless we see the accuracy is 100% right you see with loop the accuracy is 100% meaning you keep on updating the model with respect to dx right until unless you see the accuracy is 100% what is px so knowledge editor knowledge editor plus px so when i say simple knowledge editor right there is no concept of px so model is only updated with respect to dx right if you add paraphrased version also px you see that you know uh, some accuracy measures improve and this is the base version px plus loop okay so this is essentially an error analysis and this error analysis is very interesting what they did to understand what actually happens inside for every output which you obtain right for a for a query let's say the space station is located at dash output is seattle right you want to update it to goa right for every output they measured the logic right they measured log of p by 1 minus p okay now remember uh the outputs correspond to dx output corresponds to px outputs correspond to ox right and what they plotted here they plotted the logits of the old model and the updated model right so x axis is the logits for the original model and y axis is the logits for the updated model right so now think of this example right uh, the us president was the us president is barack obama and updated knowledge is 
जो बाइडन सो फॉर द फॉर द फ्रेज बराक ओबामा वॉट इज द लॉजिट फॉर द ऑरिजिनल मॉडल सो द ओरिजिनल मॉडल ऑलवेज रिटर्न बराक ओबामा सो लॉजिट इज हाई दैट्स वाई रिटर्न बराक ओबामा नाउ इन द अपडेटेड मॉडल इट शुड नॉट रिटर्न दिस इट शुड रिटर्न जो बाइडन सो फॉर द बराक ओबामा द अपडेटेड लॉजिट शुड बी लो वेर एज फॉर जो बाइडन द ओरिजिनल वन शुड बी लो and the updated one should be high clear so those outputs which are in dx for the original model the the logits should just be just be flipped think about it those will be just flipped lows will be high high will be low right now look at this green dots the green dots correspond to those uh, outputs in dx right in dx which are correct right now within dx there might be some now look at this flip so earlier this was here so some of the some of the dots were here now they are here right earlier some of the dots were here now they are here now what is the error case for some of the outputs which belong to dx let's say they are not flipped right so the error case are denoted by this uh, this red cross you see in this figure there is no red cross that means there is no error with respect to dx 100% accuracy and i i already mentioned right with fine tuning the accuracy is 100% so this is fine tuning result full fine tuning result there is no error with respect to dx now look at the ox so what will happen with ox the logic tell me it will not change right it will not change whatever will be there earlier it will remain the same so all the ox logics should basically follow this diagonal part diagonal uh, axis right so this blue dots indicate all these successful ox uh, all the successful ox knowledges successful in the sense that those have those have not been updated and those should not be updated among this among this some of them have also uh, uh, some, some of them have been updated and those are the errors right and those are denoted by this orange orange dots so ox basically has so in this figure ox is ox has uh, essentially um, ox is represented by two colors one is this blue other is this orange right blue are the uh, blue are the correct ox output and the orange oranges are basically those outputs which have been updated which should have should not have been updated so here the errors are orange dots and red cross this is for full fine tuning now this is the knowledge editor with l2 norm you see this green dots are quite separated that is good they are flipped that is good but the mess is here the, the the problem is this blue dots the blue dot is not diagonal like this blue dots also have been flipped and blue dots are what blue dots are ox that means with uh, with uh, with with l2 norm right the model is very different from the from the pretend model the updated model is very different from the pretend model okay now this is their model with kl divergence and px now here you see that the blue dots are kind of following the diagonal uh, diagonal axis whereas uh, green dots are flipped right but you here you see some red crosses right why this red crosses because i already mentioned that uh, the accuracy is 98% to 2% errors are there so these red crosses correspond to 2% of error and also of course uh less amount of uh, orange dots less amount of uh, orange dots compared to this which indicates that the pre trained knowledge has not been hampered much compared to full fine tuning okay so this is about knowledge editor okay thank you